Today's entry is Want. And while I could probably go into games of the like that I'd want to see, that's not exactly fitting my style. So instead, I'll take this time to talk about making players want to continue. And a lot of people have their own advices about these or that tricks or tips when it comes to how to get your players invested, but the big secret really is the fact that there is no secret. A lot of times it comes down to the same principles that you'd see in a performance art. The act of getting people to want just a little bit more, giving them not too much but not too little. Um, guys like Game Soup have talked about the concept of flow theory, and I think it applies just as well to tabletop gaming as well. Because obviously if you make things too difficult too quickly, then you're going to result in um, frustration. But if you make things too easy, then you're going to result in boredom. You need to have a middle ground between the two. Now, when it comes to how this is approached within RPGs, I think this is where games that use a level-based system are going to be at an advantage versus those that are more freeform. While freeform certainly has its own benefits, namely the, well, freedom that it has, it also is going to make it a little bit trickier to balance when it comes to how you're going to establish difficulty. Now, some might argue that, um, given the kind of story that it's using, that having a balanced approach isn't necessary. And I know there was that whole thing that John Wick tried to push that balance isn't necessary, which not only do I wholeheartedly disagree with, I'm probably going to have to tackle that one of these days. But the focus that I want to have here is that it's important to read the room. It's important to figure out where people are um, go are going through a little bit too easily and where people are doing a little bit less so. This is also why I'm kind. I've always been kind of iffy about how about having a bunch of mo a bunch of mooks that somebody can just chew through. Yeah, there's the nice power fantasy at first, but that kind of thing doesn't last. I also think that understanding where a natural break is is important, especially in the streaming age that we seem to be in. There's a degree there's a degree of priority, I'll say, that needs to be put into when the natural break is when it comes to a given campaign, or even if you need to um, put a rocks fall, the enemy dies kind of thing if a given encounter is going too long. This is one of those things that if you end up playing a game rules as written, you're going to have a harder time with this sort of thing because you're answering two parties instead of just one. If you're going things a bit more freeform, you'll definitely have an easier time because you'll be able to adapt on the fly. And that's not something that can really be taught. It's something that can only be learned through experience. That's probably why I think people tend to radically change the um, GM approaches the more that they play. And the rules as written using prepackaged adventure tends to fall by the wayside with time. Now, this is also the reason why I'm not I have some issues with the streamer bubble, but that's a topic for another day. <laughs> 